Hi and welcome to this snippet from my course on the preparation guide for exam 7533. Now I have personally certified myself as an MCSE on the cloud platform in Azure. I have also done the exam with the recent objectives. So whatever objectives were updated in the exam, I have done that. I have passed my exam 7532, 533 and 535. So based on all of my experience, I have actually created a course which is available on the Udemy platform. So this is a small snippet of that course. Now on that course itself, it's all based upon the new objectives of the exam. You get access to 120 lectures. That's overall of 11 and a half hours. And I just keep on adding it to ensure that it's up to date with the exam. You have access to about 68 labs or demos. You get two full length practice tests. So that's 100 questions in total. And these questions are so similar to those that you get on the actual exam. So instead of you paying for training separately, paying for questions separately, I'm giving you everything in one course. And this course is valid for a lifetime access. Updates will be made whenever there are updates to the exam. So this is the link to get the course at a 90% discount. You will not get such a big discount anywhere else on such a comprehensive course on exam 533. So you can either take this link or go to the description. I have the link over there as well. Enroll for the course and also I will be creating further courses on exam 532 and 535. And if you take this course, you will be eligible again to get a 90% discount coupon on those courses as well. So let's go on to the snippet of the course. Hi and welcome back. Now in this lab, we will learn how to use the second type of access, which is shared access signatures. Now creating and using shared access signatures is much more easier than using shared keys. I said the reason that I still elaborate a lot on using shared keys is because it can be asked in the exam. Using the shared access signatures is also important from an exam perspective, but it's more easier to generate and use it. So let's go to the Azure portal and see how we can generate and use shared access signatures. So here we are in the Azure portal. We are in our storage account. If you just go to your container for your particular object, if you want a user to have the ability to only access this object via a shared access signature, you can go to the context menu and here you have the option to generate a SAS. Now in the SAS, there are a lot of options available. So first is the type of permission that you want to give to the particular object. Do you just want to have the ability to give the user to read the object? Yes, that's the only permission I want to give. You can give the start and expiry date time. So you can say after this particular time, this URL, which is generated, which has that SAS token, will no longer be applicable or it will no longer have access to the underlying object. You can also put allowed IP addresses. So you can say that this URL can only be invoked from a particular IP address. And you can also specify what are the allowed protocols. You also have to use one of the existing access keys to sign and create the SAS token and URL. Once all of the settings are in place, click on generate the blob SAS token and URL. You will then get the complete URL. So this is the name of the file along with the start time, the end time and also the SAS token. So this is the SAS token. Now you can copy this entire URL, go to another tab and you will have access to the underlying object. So you can see it's much more easier to give a user access to the underlying object via the shared access signature. If you go back to our container, so if you go to the container and look at access policy, 
So you can still see that the level of access is private. So anonymous access don't have direct access to this particular object. They can use this complete URL only to get access to the object and the only access they have is the read permissions. And once you exceed the time, so once you exceed the expiry time, this URL will no longer be valid. So when you try to access the object again via the URL, you will not have access to the underlying object. So this is good also when you want to give access to objects within a particular time frame. So this was giving a shared access signature at the object level. So this is known as an ad hoc. It's an ad hoc shared access signature which are giving to a user for you know a particular object. I mentioned that you can also give an account level shared access signature. So if you go back to your storage account, you have something known as shared access signature. In this, you can specify what are the allowed services which is put as part of the shared access signature. You can mention the resource type, the permissions, again the start and end time, the allowed IP addresses, Again, the other settings remain the same, but the only thing is that you are giving access to more number of services and more number of resource types. So when you're giving access at this level, make sure you give the right level of access. But if you just want to give access to certain objects, to blob objects, then it's better to go and use the ad hoc shared access signatures and not this account level shared access signature. So this marks the end of this chapter.